plan that came out a couple weeks ago that was introduced, uh, and there's a version in the House and a version in the Senate now, is take $2 billion uh, from the rainy day fund and start a water infrastructure bank. You talked a little bit about this earlier in the panel, uh, and that would kind of fund uh, revolving projects that are in the state water plan. The question that uh, after the immediate euphoria, <laughs> it seemed like for a day or two of everyone saying, yay, we're going to finally fund the water plan, was, well, where do we start? Uh, you're talking about a wish list of projects, over 500 of them from 16 different groups. Uh, so uh, what in the legislation or the makeup of this water infrastructure bank is going to address how to prioritize what gets funded? Well, the way it was written, both Chairman Frazier and Chairman Ritter, they, they look at different criteria. In each of the regional plans, uh, they've got these projects projected out by decade. So they're going to pick it based on that. The other part of it is we want to make sure that those areas that we're going to focus using this money are maximizing their conservation e efforts. If they're not, then why would we build something and those folks aren't saving the water that they have in that region already. And the third part of it, I think, is, is, uh, is pretty brilliant on their part, is how uh, it impacts the rate payers in those areas. It, we're going to look at the projects and step, uh, we're going to basically look at it from a hierarchical standpoint. If it has an impact, uh, a, a less impact on the rate payer for, for this county versus this area, we'll probably go to that project before. And then uh, I think ultimately how many of them are shovel ready? How many of them have their engineering already done and how many can we get out? I mean, the, the, the impetus for the state to be involved is to drive these projects to, to start construction. I, I met with the LCA folks uh, earlier today and they've got two diversion dams that they're talking about one, uh, both of them are in the $200 million range. If they access this fund, and they will be eligible because it is in the state water plan, and they'll be able to secure the funding. This first one, they've already gone out. They're acquiring property. They're doing some of the engineering. But in the second part or the second phase, when they start the construction, they'll be eligible for it if the legislature passes it. Uh, but uh, if you look at projects of that scale, you'll eat $2 million up pretty fast. The average project will probably be in the $25 million range. And uh, I think that the other part of it, and I've, on the bill I have, and we're in the process of amending it, that you take 5% of whatever we have and you dedicate it towards ag conservation. 60% of, uh, of the water, or an excess of 60%, is used for ag production. We need to encourage that. And this might be sort of a different approach than going in because they can't afford it. So you use it as a multiplier. Use, for example, 25%. You have a 25% match, a three-to-one match, whether it be on metering wells, on, on pivot irrigation systems, something that would encourage those groundwater districts working with the farmers to save more water because there's a huge amount of water that we can save, but the state needs to step in and facilitate some of this. They've struggled with that, and, and he's a farmer. He knows that when you go in and you start talking about metering wells and you look at the cost of that and putting in uh, some of eco drip or some some of the uh, innovative approaches they're using the irrigation the state needs to have an interest in facilitating that so I would say that that ought to be part of it uh, is let's focus on that because if you look at the funding you're not going to have a lot of ag use for that funding it's going to be for municipalities and industrial users as well yeah and a huge part of the water plan is, is saying that agriculture is going to end up using less uh, and it seems like the only way for that to happen is to have better conservation, smarter use of water by the agricultural sector. Did you have anything you wanted to add to that? No. Okay. I'd, well, first I'll say that I think from the conservation side of it, everybody has to play a role because everybody has a responsibility. And uh, agriculture does, municipality does, everybody plays a role. But I do think fundamentally that we have to look at this funding mechanism and understand that, number one, this is, this is a beginning. It's not the end, but it's a beginning. And so therefore, we still have a long ways to go in funding water projects. But 
I envision that we have to have several different pots of dollars. Uh, number one, we may have a pot of dollars, as, as Representative Larson mentions, to encourage and incentivize. And I think incentivizing is the most important way rather than a hammer or a big stick. Sometimes you have to have a carrot and a stick, but the, that carrot to get people there in rural areas that where they don't, they don't have that money, uh, it doesn't exist. Now, it also means that other pots of money, whether it's using private ent uh, public entities, whether it's a river authority or whether it's municipalities, that they come in and want to have dollars because they have to bring dollars to the table. But we cannot have a mechanism to where the biggest one sucks all the dollars up. You can't have that. They come in and say, well, we got the money. We'll match the projects. We're good for the next 50 years, but it didn't provide value to the state because they don't need the water today. And that's the last thing you want to have happen. You want to have real projects, as Representative Larson said, that are ready to go on the ground and can do some good for the public of the state of Texas. And we don't want to have a sign come true that they're going to run out of water. Because from an economic perspective, when a state grows 5 million people in the last 10 years and we're projected to continue growing, we have to have the economic engine of this state continue. Otherwise, we got severe problems. And I think the last part of it is you need a pot of dollars, whether we say this is right or wrong, I think realistically in the 21st century, that you can match with private potential dollars to help get you there. You don't want people to come in and just make a, a ton of money off the public and, and, and get rich on water projects because we value water to a different level as oil. But I do think Representative Harvey is correct that we do not appreciate the real value of that pure H2O. And so I think the private sector is gonna play a role in this as well. Mm -hmm.